Hello students, uh, welcome to the third lecture of my online course on nanophotonics, plasmonics and metamaterials. The title of this lecture is Overview and Current Status. So in this lecture, we'll be covering first the applications of matter surfaces, which we could not cover in lecture two. And then I'll provide you a brief overview of uh, nanophotonics applications of silicon photonics we'll introduce these new terms here we'll talk about the market silicon photonics market applications of nanophotonics the market trend in nanophotonics applications of plasmonics again the market trend of plasmonics and also we'll talk about the metamaterials market why i am focusing a lot on the market scenario because we should be aware of the fact that what are the current trends in the technology and going ahead in next 10-15 years where the technology focus is going to be. So that is why this particular lecture is particularly is very important because that will give you a broad overview of this new field in terms of research, in terms of job situation and so on. So this particular schematic gives you an idea of nanophotonics breakthrough for um, electronic integrated chips. So we'll come to those in the due course of time. So first of all, a quick recap on metamaterials that we have seen in uh, yesterday's lecture. So metamaterials opens endless opportunity for material engineering. As we discussed that you know in metamaterials the property of uh, the material depends not on the constituent atoms but it depends on the physical structure of the matter atoms so that brings you almost infinite possibilities of designing nanostructures or matter atoms which are the unit cells and they actually define what should be the permeability and permittivity of this particular material so truly this brings in you know endless opportunity and we have also seen that the development strategies for metamaterials and the functional materials they mainly focus on the structures which give rise to this you know exotic properties and they are not restricted only to optical field we have seen mechanical thermal acoustic metamaterials so metamaterials indeed is the new wonder in material engineering field and if you talk about their 2d counterparts that's matter surfaces so simply speaking matter surfaces are you know 2d metamaterials and if this is a three-dimensional matter atom which is the building block of a matter material you can think of a 2d kind of design as a matter atom for the matter surface right so you know if you restrict one of these in the z direction it becomes extremely thin and that is what is a matter surface then what about the dimension of these unit cells or matter atom they are again much much sub wavelength okay so the wavelength is much much larger than the feature size so that is how you know matter surfaces uh, will be designed now why people wanted to go from matter materials to matter surfaces because there are certain features Meta surfaces can bring on the table something like you know the thin layer ease of fabrication then low cost degree of freedom in integration in a particular you know constant space so all these new features that you know meta meta surfaces are able to bring make them actually popular candidate and they have unique ability to manipulate the electromagnetic waves over this surface in microwave and optical frequencies so if you make a comparison between a lens made of uh, meta material and a meta surface you can typically look into the difference meta surface lens will bring on table it can actually make the lens very very thin layer so that is where you know in a compact um, device where the world is looking towards miniaturization of all components matter surfaces looks more promising now let us discuss some promising applications of matter surfaces 
to continue we'll be working talking about the metal lens so metal lens is basically an advanced flat optical device which is based on metal surface and here you can see a comparison okay so this is a conventional lens made of a glass or any other dielectric material and this is the typical thickness is in the order of centimeters okay whereas when you make a um, lens doing the same functionality of focusing the incoming beams to a point you can see a metal lens a metal surface lens can be very very thin of the order of 100 nanometer so how does metal surface work the amplitude phase and polarization of incident light can be engineered okay by this uh, by this matter atoms interaction to satisfy the application requirement and that is how you know matter surfaces can be useful so matter lenses can be designed to achieve a variety of functions something like diffraction limited focusing so you can actually focus in a very very tiny spot okay then you can actually go for high focusing efficiency also you can go for aberration uh, corrections now if this term is new i'd quickly tell you then in optics aberration is a property uh, of optical systems such as lenses uh, that causes light to spread out over some region of space rather than you know getting focused to a particular point so aberration causes the images formed by the lens to be blurred or distorted and this is kind of a uh, with the nature of distortion happening on the type of aberration so matter material or matter surface based lens can actually uh, get rid of this effect and get you better focusing so here is a in our typical design of a metal surface lens as you can see this cons operates at uh, 600 nanometer and it constitutes of titanium dioxide nanofilm on a glass substrate so this is how you know the elements are patterned and this is the cross-sectional view the side view and this is the front view of the metal surface of the top view you can see other application would be like a metal surface polarizer you can see why we need polarizer to you know induce polarization or change the polarization of the light so you can see a prism polarizer which is typically uh, available in any optical bench and this will be a high-end ultra thin polarizer which is based on a metal surface so you can see the amount of uh, you know compactness metal surface brings on table so matter surface constituting nano units can offer great potential of generating polarized beams okay which is an efficient way to manipulate uh, vector beams so here in this figure you can see this is particularly the unit cell that is repeating over this uh, matter surface so in this uh, this unit cell is called matter atom and in this unit cell you have a metallic scatterer on a dielectric substrate the bottom is a uh, you know the back plane is a conducting sheet so this is how this matter surface is constructed now if you see there is an incoming light beam which is linearly polarized and upon reflection from this particular surface it gets circular polarized so you can actually change the polarization of the light upon reflection using uh, matter surface matter surface can also be designed in transmissive mode where you can change the polarization of linearly polarized waves okay from say t to tm and so on so this is just one example so all these tiny scatterers they are doing the wonders okay they actually help you to rotate the plane of polarization so matter surfaces they are ultra thin they are easy to you know fabricate easy to integrate and they allow you to manipulate light on nanometer scale so they are widely used in design of optical components such as circular polarizer or circular polarization analyzer polarization converters optical vortices and so on so you can actually think of all bulk optical components being replaced by this flat optical components which are typically metal surfaces other applications would be you know 
matter surface holography now holography is nothing but a way of making 3d images or 3d pictures using light so matter surface holography can be performed by mapping the configuration precisely to the position and the local scattering properties of nanoscale uh, optical resonators which are patterned on the interface so when you compare matter surface hologram with you know conventional holograms matter surface one have got a lot of advantages something like you can get unprecedented spatial resolution low noise and high precision of the reconstructed image okay significantly reduced sub wavelength pixel size contributes to improved hologramic image compared to the traditional holograms due to the elimination of undesired diffraction orders and they also provide large space bandwidth products due to their ability to achieve high or large area fabrication so here you can see the schematic illustration of a multicolor dielectric matter surface you see this one and they are nothing but uh, this is one particular matter atom which has got multiplexed or multiplexing of silicon nanoblocks of different sh shapes and orientation so when light falls on this okay you can see this hologram independently projects distinct colors like you know the red flower the green peduncle and the blue pot so all this information can be you know in the meta atom and that can create this particular hologram other images uh, or other sorry other application can be in uh, meta surface hyperspectral imaging now what is hyperspectral imaging it is basically a technique that analyzes a wide spectrum of light instead of just assigning the primary colors like red green and blue to each pixel so the, when light strikes each pixel it is broken into many different spectral bands uh, in order to provide more information on what is getting imaged so hyperspectral imaging has become extremely adopted or you know it is very very popular in application areas like remote sensing uh, environmental monitoring art conservation and biomedical engineering the demand for hy hyperspectral imaging is rapidly growing but conventional uh, hyperspectral imaging systems they are bulky uh, and they are based on dispersive optics and they require long optical path lengths so overall the device is bulky so you want the new applications or the new application demand this uh, hyperspectral imaging system to be really compact and lightweight and this is where matter surfaces will come into the picture matter surfaces are compact lightweight and inexpensive solution for miniaturized hyperspectral imaging system the schematic shown here is basically a scheme of a folded um, matter surface hyperspectral imager this device as you can see has got three reflective matter surfaces and one transmissive matter surface to perform you know optical function so light enters uh, through the input aperture here and it interacts with the uh, uh, reflective matter surfaces while it is confined uh, inside the substrate by these two gold mirrors and then finally when it exits by this uh, transmissive matter surface okay uh, you will see that different wavelengths are dispersed in vertical position so this is how the wavelengths will be dispersed and also various input angles are focused at different horizontal positions so that is how you are able to get hyperspectral imaging done using matter surfaces the other application would be absorber as the name suggests absorber will absorb electromagnetic radiation so the traditional methods to achieve uh, efficient absorption would be by using black paint metal oxide or other natural materials with much or with high loss but the problems with that is that this particular you know materials the absorption of light is not typically very high so the absorbers become very bulky and as soon as they become bulky they are not suitable to be miniaturized and integrated into integrated photonic systems 
such as you know solar cell solar energy conversion equipment or photo detectors so what is the solution solution would be to look for matter surfaces which is basically combination of uh, material and the geometric parameters okay or the unit cells that that will help you you know uh, provide uh, absorption over a particular band so this is a typical image of uh, matter surface absorber where you have uh, silica as a substrate you have a gold mirror thin gold mirror on top of that you have a silicon nanopillar so this particular one is able to give 100 percent absorption over a particular band other applications would be like beam steering so in beam steering you you actually require beam steering to change the direction of the main lobe of the radiation pattern in a desired position so that is very very important in different communication applications so matter surfaces with high index contrast and sub wavelength separation okay can control the amplitude and phase responses and they allow you to manipulate the phase front and that is how you can actually get beam steering done so matter surfaces exhibit ultra lightweight small thickness sub wavelength resolution flexible material choice and CMOS compatibility okay to become a promising candidate for you know devices such as beam shaper or beam steer okay so these are the applications the other interesting application of matter surface would be in the field of cloaking cloaking means hiding something okay so you can actually think look at the schematic here it shows that you know the incident light is getting reflected by the matter surface in such a way as if it is getting reflected from the flat surface so there is no change in the direction of the reflection so in that case you know whatever is hidden uh, below this particular matter surface will not be seen because the reflection pattern is exactly like a from the flat surface so this is how the clocking using matter surface will work so achieving perfect electromagnetic clocking for large object is very very important for invisibility research towards practical application so who are people uh, interested in this kind of application obviously the defense people would be interested so you can think of thin matter surfaces instead of you know large volumetric matter materials to do this job for you which can control the wave radiation propagation and scattering using this you know thin engineered surfaces so matter surface cloaks typically comprising one layer of resonators as you can see here they have been demonstrated for hiding objects by bending light around the object that was the one we discussed in the previous lecture or you can actually make sure that the reflection happens in such a way as that it it is exactly same as as if it is a flat surface so whatever is below this uh, matter surface will go undetectable something like this okay you can hide anything here so that the reflection spectrum or the reflection profile looks like as if the light is coming from you know a flat surface the other application would be in the field of sensing so we have seen plasmonic structures doing sensing but matter surface can also strongly localize and intensify fields making them you know effective for detecting very small concentration of analytes as well as improving the uh, sensor selectivity for detecting nonlinear chemicals so here the each uh, matter atom or building block is a resonating element so they can actually uh, work as a sensor and it has been suggested to enhance the sensing performance of you know surface plus bond resonance based sensors by replacing the metallic parts there with matter surfaces so matter surface has got a promising you know future towards sensing as well and this matter surfaces can significantly improve the sensitivity and resolution of the sensors this provide additional levels of freedom for sensor modeling which can also bring in more sensitivity and simplify the readout circuitry all in all you know here we can see 
that you know the recent advances in meta surfaces uh, in other application areas like bioimaging and biosensing. Bioimaging areas include endoscopic OCT or optical coherence tomography, chiral imaging, fluorescent imaging, quantitative phase imaging, super resolution imaging and also in the field of MRI magnetic resonance imaging where metamaterials can be used to locally boost up the magnetic field so that you know the signals from the MRI can be boosted locally. Matter surfaces can also be used for biosensing to detect antibodies and proteins, DNAs, different cells, cancer biomarkers and so on. So what are the future directions of uh, matter surface research? To look into matter surface enabled adaptive optics for abrasion correction and deep tissue imaging. So these are the areas where people are working on. Matter surface enabled optical fibers for in vivo bioimaging and remote sensing, matter surface based structured light generation for bioimaging, conformal matter surfaces for smart uh, wearables and implants, matter surface based optical tweezing for analysis of cells and bacteria, and biomimic or bio inspired matter surfaces. So, there are plethora of applications of uh, matter materials and matter surfaces as you can see. So, all this actually brings in infinite possibilities of engineering the interaction of electromagnetic waves with matter. Now, the matter is completely in your control. So, waves you bring it in with the matter, the new design you can actually make them make the wave do what you want to do. Okay. So, going ahead, let us quickly have an overview of nanophotonics so if you look into this particular uh, figure where we discussed about the relative dimension of the devices when compared to the wavelength and this is the wavelength axis so smaller wavelength typically is the optics area and larger wavelength will be the microwave and radio waves and we have seen that when the size is much much less larger than the wavelength that is where the bulk um, optics come into picture when they are comparable that is like the photonics field and when the device size is smaller than the wavelength we have nanophotonics. So that is what happens in the optical area. The same thing also applicable for microwaves and radio. You see the large antennas, you see the waveguides which are comparable to the wave dimension okay and then you also have metamaterials in microwave and radio domain where the device dimension is much smaller than the wavelength okay so all in all this gives you a complete overview of the field of nanophotonics and metamaterials so if anyone asks you what is nanophotonics now you should be able to tell that nanophotonics is basically the science and engineering of light matter interaction that takes place on the wavelength and sub wavelength scale okay where the physical chemical and structural nature or of the natural or artificial nanostructured matter that controls the interaction so nanophotonics also includes plasmons they, that could confine electromagnetic radiation well below the diffraction limit and this particular field overall opens you know infinite possibility of material engineering using metamaterials and meta surfaces. So that actually the metamaterials and meta surfaces have actually added a feather to the cap of uh, nanophotonics where you have infinite freedom to design the device with the functionality you want. So once again I am repeating myself that this is particularly a branch where multidisciplinary nature is completely seen. So, people from electrical engineering, optics, optical engineering, chemistry, physics, chemical engineering, medical, uh, material science and engineering can come in and it is also a branch of nanotechnology because finally you have to make it, make those devices using nanotechnology. So, these are some real world examples of nanophotonics because we are not the pioneer, okay. 
the nature the almighty has already you know used nanophotonics to make our world look so beautiful so if you look into the wings of a butterfly and the colors that you see that are not basically from the pigment but from the structures the nanostructures that are embedded into the wings of the butterfly they can actually reflect a particular light so that these bright colors are seen similarly if you look into the you know feather of a peacock this beautiful color or the pattern that you see is not basically for the from the pigmentation but from the structure that is embedded there similarly the natural opals they also have this you know internal structure that does all this you know bright colors if you look into the sea mouse their hair also actually have uh, you know photonic crystal kind of arrangement of hexagonal cylinders that give these different colors when you look at them you know from different angles so these are natural examples of you know nanophotonics so we see a lot of uh, you know beautiful stuff thanks to the nanophotonics embedded in them now when we try to make something we need to have the industry support and that is where when you think of nanophotonics we have to also think of what kind of industry or foundry can support this kind of nanophotonic devices the first obvious uh, answer comes to our mind is that can we look at the silicon industry which has uh, grown uh, significantly over last couple of decades so that brings us to a topic which is known as silicon photonics so this is again a subfield of uh, nanophotonics but here you want to do all the nanophotonic functionalities on silicon platform so that you can use the semiconductor foundries to make your devices so here the material choice is kind of limited we are not talking about any other material other than silicon or CMOS uh, foundry compatible materials so here our material choice is kind of you know limited so silicon photonics is basically a silicon based subfield of nanophotonics in which the nanoscale structures of the optoelectronic devices are realized on silicon substrates that is you are basically making integrated photonic circuits which are capable of controlling both light and electrons such devices will find a variety of applications starting from quantum photonics to communication and what are the different applications as you can see you know you can use them as light modulators optical waveguides and interconnects optical amplifiers uh, photo detectors memory elements uh, photonic crystals etc so if you see uh, integrated photonic circuits there you actually have integration between light radio frequency and also sound in a in a way that you know how light and radio frequency they are interacting they are basically there is a field called microwave photonics which we have uh, discussed briefly in the previous lecture so this is how the optoelectronics part is working and then you also have you know sound or you know mechanics in gigahertz range so this is where uh, sound or acoustics is uh, interacting with optical field and this field is called optomechanics so these are different applications broadly now let us also look into the other application areas of silicon photonics because right now silicon photonics is the immediate future whereas the other fields like meta surfaces are still in in its infancy and they will require some time to grow but if you think silicon photonics because of the in fabrication support silicon photonics can get from the semiconductor industry this is an immediate field of research or and application so photonics has led the way to the generation modulation and detection of terahertz waves 
okay now terahertz is the frequency gap between the infrared and microwaves so photonics can help you generate modulate and detect terahertz waves such as photo mixing technique so you can use them for terahertz detection generation and modulation as shown here silicon photonics has uh, enabled the implementation of large number of optical components for practical usage such as uh, for terahertz integrated systems and the recent progress in terahertz technologies based on silicon photonics or hybrid silicon photonics includes this kind of you know generation detection phase modulation intensity modulation and developing other passive components so the terahertz technology is getting support from silicon photonics the other area will be the quantum optics area the where it is possible to have uh, quantum emitters and more excitants so photons are indispensable as carriers of quantum information they travel at the fastest possible speed and readily protected from decoherence for quantum technology to be implemented a new paradigm photonic system is required one is uh, built with coherence stability and the ability to define arbitrary circuits and a path towards manufacturability so silicon photonics has uh, unparalleled density and component performance that we have already seen which with the cmos compatible fabrication setup place it in a very strong uh, position for scalable quantum photonics platform the next application would be in flexible photonics so researchers around the globe are developing wide range of flexible systems including flexible display sensors rfid tags and similar devices okay you can think of image sensors emitters detectors all are flexible okay so based on flexible substrate so transistors interconnects memory cells passive components and other assorted devices will have you know challenging material demands for flexible electronics to become a reality nanoparticles nanotubes nanowires and engineered organic molecules are contributing towards it towards the realization of this high performance semiconductor dielectrics and conductors for flexible electronics application you can also think of microwave photonics that refers to generation processing distribution and measurement of microwave signals using photonic components and techniques some examples are shown here like frequency comps and four wave mixing so what are the application or advantages here they offer ultra wide bandwidth and flexible reconfiguration of optical processing so integrated microwave photonic technologies can enable analog optical fiber links analog optical signal processing of micro signals photonic generation of uh, millimeter wave and terahertz signals arbitrary waveform generation and photonics enabled phase arrays so all these applications all these new devices are possible so the applications will include antenna uh, remote sensing space communication and cellular 5g networks you can also see silicon photonics being part of my uh, mid infrared photonics okay so there is a persuasive need to open up the mid infrared area of the spectrum em spectrum for spectroscopic sensing in the fields of uh, fields as diverse as bio and medical photonics manufacturing control environmental monitoring and security so for that what you require you require modulators detectors and emitters so that is where also silicon photonics is going to help so mid infrared typically covers important uh, atmospheric window and strong fundamental absorptions of you know molecular species so since mir region has a significant role in various fields rapid progress has been made on photonics and optical electronics applications Uh, using 2D materials in this area, the progress in the photonic devices that exploit the unique 
properties of 2D materials for the range of mid-infrared applications are mainly in ultra-fast light generation, mid-infrared light modulation and photo detection. So these applications are support. So other photonic applications you can think of in the synaptic devices, synaptic devices like where this is the same technique like how nerve cells communicate with each other. So you can actually think of synaptic memory stir, synaptic transistor, these are the emerging nanoelectronic devices which are expected to you now subvert the traditional data storage and computing methodology. So with the need of more and more storage, people are looking for this kind of technologies, nanoelectronic technologies. So in particular, the memory stir device and synaptic transistor can conduct neuromorphic computing. So just like the way our brain computes thing, so these devices are also trying to conduct neuromorphic. So it's like kind of you know mimicking the brain, okay, to enable high performance super parallel computing. I understand the, all these new terms you are uh, encountering during these lectures, but then you know we don't worry. We didn't. We will not go into all or details of all the terms. The, the overall idea here is to give an overview of this field and what are the new developments happening in and around nanophotonics. And this is why I'm showing all these things to you that actually give you a better overview and idea that this field is you know growing exponentially and all in almost every direction. You can also think of photothermal therapy which refers to the effort of using electromagnetic uh, radiation for the treatment of various medical conditions including cancer. Okay, So these are the applications that you can think of. Silicon photonics can be useful in 5G and future networks, data center and communication, quantum computation, lab on chip biosensor, neural network and artificial intelligence and also in quantum technologies. Now this particular slide shows you the growth of silicon photonics market which was uh, 1.1 billion USD in 2021 and it is expected to grow up to 4.6 billion USD by 2027. So you can see a compound annual growth rate or a mean growth rate of around 26.8%. So that's huge. So that's a good time to dive into this particular technology market. So here we can also show you the component wise like in 2019 the main market was focused on data center transceivers and long haul transceivers but now you can see with the you know requirement of 5G technologies and you know automotive driverless cars so new technologies are getting into uh, consideration so by 2025 you can see optical interconnects LiDAR technology, then sensing, immunoassay tests, fiber optic uh, gyroscope and 5G transceivers, they are also going to grow equally. After we understand the silicon photonics market, and this is one of the obvious solutions in the current era people will look for, there are also possibilities of exploring other materials, not only silicon because if we are able to show that there is enough potential in those materials, there will be drive to set up those foundries and facilitate fabrication of those nanoscale devices in large scale. Uh, one such example I will be showing here today is use of nanoparticle metagrid. Metagrid is nothing but a two dimensional array of nanoparticles. For enhancing the light extraction from LEDs. LEDs, all of you know that these are one of the most widely used device in lighting and automotive industry these days. You can think of you know outdoor displays, traffic lights, automotive lighting, even surface decontamination using UV LEDs during COVID time. Wearable gadgets, smartphone displays, everywhere OLEDs or LEDs, uh, light emitting diodes are used. Okay, 
so you can actually use nanoparticle metagrid to extract more light that is being generated in the semiconductor chip of an led and you can actually take out that light for final usage right now a lot of light is basically lost and that cannot be extracted so nanoparticle metagrid can actually help you do that so this lighting industry display industry is huge so if um, nanoparticle metagrid can make a substantial contribution towards bringing down the energy requirement of lighting industry okay also this can help leds to get a longer lifetime and contribute towards climate change in a positive way like reducing the energy requirement this can be a motivating factor for people to explore this kind of technologies other applications could be in sensing in future level chip devices by using dielectric nano antennas as you can see here this dielectric nano antennas are able to focus light okay and by making a different array or chains of this uh, nano antennas you can you can basically focus light in different different regions that can be used for sensing applications so this nano antennas can also potentially replace the lossy on chip interconnects by by transmitting optical signals to different ICs so in, instead of you know sending signals over a uh, metallic patch you can actually send optical signals by using these nano antennas for intra chip communication or inter chip communication so that will also ensure ultra fast data processing with while minimizing the device heating so you can also see the global nanophotonics market on its own so right now 2021 you can see a uh, usd 12.6 billion is the market size which will grow up to 20.6 billion again 2027 so it has got a growth rate of 8.5 percent so it is not growing at the same rate of silicon photonics but yes nanophotonics market is also growing that allows you to explore the new materials and if you see the different segments in the nanophotonics market okay led and oled is one particular area other one is like sensor photovoltaic cells near field optics optical switches optical amplifier holographic memory these are the different products they are focusing on so the end use industry would be the consumer electronics healthcare biotechnology it and communication automotive you know driverless cars okay defense technologies and so on so what are the different materials people are exploring quantum dots photonic crystals plasmonics nanotubes nanoribbons these are the materials getting explored and right now as you can see that you know there is a huge competition between north america and asia pacific to be a leader in this particular nanophotonics market so that's a very very positive sign for us a part of nanophotonics is plasmonics as we all know and the different applications for plasmonics are shown here one could be in you know cloaking devices for invisibility you can look for ultra fast optical computers high resolution imaging devices better color sensitivity in cameras okay new type of solar cell with higher efficiency faster fiber optic communication you can think of tumor cell you know killing cancer therapies and lasers for self-driving cars so if you look at plasmonics plasmonics basically deal with uh, surface plasmons and that actually brings in three main effects something like electric field enhancement hot electron generation and photothermal effect so this near field enhancement actually helps better photo detection efficient increase the efficiency of solar cell and sensors there are many hot electron based devices that are possible and also thermo plasmonic devices from the photothermal effect that is associated with the absorption of photons by this plasmonic nanoparticles you can use photothermal effect for massless lithography and um, 
other applications like you know photo detection energy harvesting and so on so if you look into all different branches of plasmonics you can divide them in you know biochemical sensing cancer therapy heat assisted magnetic recording high resolution imaging and lithography optical metamaterials and metasurfaces sub-wavelength optical devices etc sensing is also done with plasmonics not only you know localized surface plasmons you can also use uh, propagating surface plasmons or spp based sensors so you can think of different kind of applications like glucose monitoring disease detection colorimetric sensor medical diagnosis all these things are possible because they are very sensitive to any biomolecules getting attached to the you know metal dielectric interface through which the surface you know plasmon is propagating so if there is any change in the refractive index there will be change in the angle of uh, reflection of light and that will get detected so this allows you to do a very very you know trace amount of molecule detection using plasmonics so if you look into the plasmonics market the main drivers is basically the expansion in the healthcare sector and also there is a growth and demand in the cost effective and efficient devices the materials involved for plasmonics are typically gold silver aluminium copper graphene etc new materials are also being explored in 2022 the market of all these things was around uh, 10.7 billion and there is a 15.5 percent growth rate towards 2031 so that's a big big uh, growth rate but as you see here you know the biomedical application is, is one of the major focus area of plasmonics on the other hand if you look into the meta materials and meta surface uh, market as i told you this is relatively a new area so the market share right now in 2021 is 305 million us dollar so that's comparatively low but it has got a very high growth rate of 36.7 percent and right now as you can see almost 42 percent of the market is in north america but then you know with the interest in communication uh, applications in defense and aerospace okay there is a huge drive towards meta material and meta surfaces so you can expect you know by 2027 a 19% growth rate in overall market of meta material and meta surface asia pacific is also expected to grow at a faster rate because of you know the growing end user industries okay so the main market drivers for meta material and meta surface market is basically the growing demand for high performance materials for different end use industries so by end use industries i want to name automotive aerospace and defense consumer electronics healthcare, and others okay and also the good thing is that there is a rise in investment made by government organizations to develop meta materials people have understood that you know there will be no limitation in or restriction in material properties if you are able to master the art of designing meta materials so this particular graph actually shows you that by 2030 okay you can actually see that you know the meta materials for communication can actually go up to 10.7 billion dollar market by 2030 okay so by 2025 all the communication uh, users are the leading ones but you know slowly the sensing market will also catch up and that will kind of you know overpower or overdo the communication markets so this is more or less the complete market scenario of this new upcoming field of nanophotonics plasmonics meta materials and meta surface i hope this motivates you to understand each of this topic to a great extent and we'll try to go into more technical details of each topic starting from the next lecture that will give you the fundamentals of this new all these new areas that we are discussing till now okay thank you any queries you can write to me at this particular email address mm -hmm.